So starting with the Chiefs is a surprise because yeah, I sure. thought I was pretty sure a couple weeks ago, Chris, maybe it was three weeks ago when right. I had this headline, hey, Chiefs in last place, Kansas City yeah. in last place in the AFC West, that that was going to be something that we looked back and kind of laughed about. Right. It wasn't that funny that right. Chiefs were in last place. Well, mid-October, Chiefs still in last place yes. after losing uh, easily or handily to Buffalo 38-20 on Sunday night. I want to get into both sides of the ball. Yeah. Let's start with, with the defense. Nothing more important than preventing points on defense. So they are last yeah. in scoring defense. Right. Nobody has given up more points right. than the Chiefs. What's your first thought with, yeah. with what's happening there? Second to last in yards, right? They're battling it out. Right now, I think I believe them and the Seattle Seahawks are on pace to let up the most yards in the history of the NFL. Yikes. Uh, it's all over the place. I don't really know where even to begin with the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, first off, it's just not as buttoned up as we've seen in years past. Now, Spagnola's always been great and creative, and, and I've always admired him about that. But within that, okay, yeah, there might have been a detail messed every now and then, which is going to happen when you're playing tons of disguises. And okay, like I, I get it. You know, you're, you're not the most talented defense. You're trying to do it with schemes and tricks. And every now and then you're going to mess up a detail here and there. But right now, details are being messed up all the time. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, so there's those issues. You know, whether it's wrong run fits, wrong adjustments in the run game in general, uh, not communicating properly as the ball is getting ready to be snapped. You still see guys talking and trying to figure things out, as we've discussed, I think, before. You know, uh, we'll break down a play in a minute here just to show, you know, slot receivers just getting to run up the field. Nobody even disrupting them. Just, hey, you're really fast. We'll just let you go and, you know, f our safety. We'll put them in a horrible <laughs> position. You know, there's just all of that. And then I think you couple that with, what I would say right now, you got young, some young guys who are playing, new to their system, right? Some new corners, some new linebackers that are young, you know, and then added to the fact that it just the talent level is not overwhelmingly good right now. That's a laundry list of things. It which, is a laundry Which you would expect when a team is last in the league at exactly. points. Exactly. What do you think counts, though, as most wrong, as belonging first on that list? Ooh. It's it's either it's it's a, li a little bit. Of, I'm gonna say the talent level right now. I am. To me, they they only have one difference making defensive and he didn't player, play. and he didn't play, and that's Chris Jones. Yeah. And I think that's one thing I would say. Hey, let's move Chris Jones back to defensive tackle when he does come back. You know, he's not the same player at defense end. He's still really good, but he was the second best defensive tackle in all of football, all behind Aaron Donald. And I understand the thought, and I'm not second guessing that. I was in favor of it. I really was. So I'm certainly not trying to play. But I've seen enough now to go. Okay, it's I, I like it the other way. So that would be the first thing I would say. You know, yeah, you know, the younger linebackers, we've hit on that. You know, I'm not sure they're always getting people in the right way or doing exactly what they're supposed to do. You know, the corners, hey, the, the man to man zone, whatever, they they blow things on a weekly basis. Um, but but and then and then Honey Badger, he's not the same either. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I I think they saw this. This is why they did not re up him or re sign him to a new big contract because he has lost a gear. So when I come back to it, like yeah, I go okay, yeah. There's some details missing, and they're definitely messing some things up. And that goes to coaching and the players together. But the talent itself too, I think, is concerning as well. And Chris Jones is really the only blue chip guy they got. That has to speak also to personnel and the planning. And what what I wonder when I watch them, when I looked at the numbers. Yeah. Here getting ready for today. Yeah. Do you think they were so confident with the offensive line fixed? Hey, yeah. Kelsey's back, Hill's back, right. Mahomes is back. Right. Our offense is going to be so good. If we're just average on defense, if we're just okay, yeah. we'll be fine. Right. You think there was overconfidence there? I, I don't think there was. I just think some of the defensive moves haven't come through. Jerron Reed, you know, expected that to work. And then signing him, you know, from Seattle when they wanted to restructure his contract. Hasn't played all that well. You know, Mike Hughes, they trade for him from Minnesota. He's been good, but not great. Right. You know, DeAndre Baker, I thought, oh, maybe that'll, you know, help them out a little bit. That's not been good. Some of the guys that have played good the last few years just aren't playing good right now. So I think there was I, – I don't want to call it lazy on there. I do think, like, your thought is correct. Like, they thought, like, hey – our defense, we don't need to be a top 10 defense. If we're around the middle of football and we just, you know, iron out this offensive line issue, we're still going to be one of the best teams in football. So we'll see where it goes. The defense, I'm extremely concerned about. The offense, I'm not 
overly concerned. And we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get to yeah. the offense yeah. eventually. I want right. to keep it with his defense. Yeah, it's been such it. an issue. Right. A lot of examples I know you want to show from the Sunday night game yeah. against Buffalo. Right. Um, as far as the eye test goes with Josh Allen, he was I mean, he was terrific. Man, did he look good no doubt. on Sunday night. Not a huge surprise, but even a better version maybe than, than what we had, had seen. Yeah. And I think one of the most alarming numbers kind of sifting through what mattered the most right. throughout the league on Sunday – Josh Allen, 20 yards per completion. Yeah, that's exactly right. 15 that's like, completions that's for 315. That's big 12-ish. Yeah. You don't see that in the NFL. No, you don't. And I think that speaks to the defense not being on the same page. And then really, as we're going to show here in a few minutes, just some really bad mess-ups as the Had game goes along too. Yeah. So it's a little bit of everything. You know, and, and what I would be worried about is you've you've awakened the beast. And what I mean by that is like you've awakened the beast of Josh Allen in that offense now, where you know, they've been good the first few weeks, but yeah, not great. Not, like, not like they were last year. Now you give them a little confidence after that game, and I would say watch out. Um, but yeah, those numbers like you're talking about, uh, the, those they are concerning. There's no doubt about that. Might not be another game this year where a quarterback goes twenty yards per completion. No, and probably not. I mean, yeah, it, it's be. it's a rare it's a rare thing. It right. has to be the right matchup with the right offense against the right scheme to kind of get that you know that type of number number of plays here yeah I know you want to get to to yeah. kind of point out what's up or what happened on Sunday night where right. do you want to start yeah let's start I think we got a first play here is just uh let's see which one is this this is I think this is uh, Josh oh, Allen checked down to Zach Moss yeah okay. for 24 so yards here's little details that we're talking about I mean yeah this is I'm going to stand up. I forgot to hold my clicker. Situation, uh, second quarter, about halfway through the second. Buffalo trailing at this point, 10-7, first and 10. I don't even need to stand up for this one, really. There you go. Like, we can sit here and watch this where, okay, yes, it's – there it is. Nice little play. Fake the, you know, inside zone to the left. Fake the reverse. Just another way to run some play action pass, okay? But here's the thing. I, I This is amazing to me. Now, again, it's just lack of, like – knowing the formation, where people are on the field. And I'm going to stand up now because here, you got a, you could see here on this side, it, it's, you know, on this, we got a deep cross by Dawson Knox, right? His first read is to Emmanuel Sanders over here. All right. And really, you know, as you see here, like he might've been able to throw to Emmanuel Sanders here, just throw it up to the high corner and do that. But I understand here he's being conservative and I, they have the lead at this point. But this is like just a little bit of like what I'm talking about of not the details being off or or what the f are we doing? I don't understand this. And this is I want to look at the middle linebacker here, number 53, Hitchens, who throughout his career has been a you know a very good player. I certainly don't mean to single him out this way, but this just like is a just a good way. Where's he going? Uh, exactly, <laughs> a good way of like just showing. I don't know what's going on in Kansas City right now. Now, so he's got his eyes back at the quarterback and Josh Allen, as you could see here on this video, right? And as Josh Allen is pushing up in the pocket, I, I mean, he turns around and runs to nobody. He had to see the ball come out. I, I would think – I don't know what he's looking wow, for. Wow, that's weird. Let alone knowing the pre-snap formation and going, wait, there's no, no more receivers over to this area. There's nothing there. I don't really need to be even looking there. You would think he would have some feel for the tight end just went by him, that he would think that he was going in that direction to some capacity. And, yeah, again, this is not like, oh, man, Anthony Hitchens. What, like, this, is, I, this is, yeah, him. I don't know if this is coaching, but he, it can't yeah. be that easy. He did not learn that at Iowa. Uh, it can't be that easy where you just throw a check down, okay, off of a play-action pass. A play-action pass, again, too, Paulie, that – Everybody in football runs this play. This is this is like standard football. To be that unaware, and then he Josh Allen gets to throw a five yard pass that ultimately ends up going for what? I don't know. 20 twenty four yards. Twenty four yards. yards. That's insane. It's, it's at least an extra ten because the linebacker turned and ran, tur turned and ran yes. after the ball was right. thrown. Right. So that 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 you know again, just another example of like the lack of details, lack of awareness. I don't really know who to blame there. I don't know. I mean, right. obviously Hitchens to a degree, and and probably the co coaching to go along with that. All right. Very next play. I think this was Josh's best pass of the night. Thirty five yard touchdown to Emmanuel Sanders. Like insane right okay and it is it is and, and again this is not like oh wow what great play design it's good play design it's just knowing hey I got really good guys and they're not covering people that well and added to that as I stand up here is just I mean 
the time he has in the pocket, I mean, there's just there's nobody. And that was a theme all night. It was. Yeah. They can't. They can't. So they're really compromised because nobody can get pressure other than Chris Jones. And then they're not covering that well in the back end. So they don't want to blitz and compromise these guys right now. So they're really – Steve Spagnuolo is in a tough spot. He is. And you can see here, I mean, here's, here's Josh Allen. All right? So, I mean, we can count this out a little bit. He gets the snap. All right, here's the ball snap. It's 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. 1,004. And let me just tell you, in case you're just listening, when I get to 1,004, he's getting ready to cock the ball. There's still nobody There's around nobody him. around him. He's not even worried about, I'm going to take a hit here. He Look at his eyes, first off. He starts off going left to right to move in the pocket, which he didn't even really need to do, back to the left, and then freaking laser beam, right? And I'm not going to necessarily blame the coverage all that much on this play. I'm not. You know, Legereus Sneed um, – is not in the best position here in the world, but this throw is insanity. So yeah. this, this is a little bit of just showing you, again, lack of playmaking ability on the Kansas City defense, and then that Josh Allen is a freak of nature and arguably the best player in football or in that discussion. There's no doubt about that. To that point, take yeah. it back to where when Josh released the ball. And who was that corner? On That's Legereus Sneed. Okay. Right. I, I think it, he, he is guarding him at such a point on the field inside the five-yard line, he probably thinks – this is an up and over ball 40 yards down the field. 100%. There's not enough room behind me. I'm safe. He didn't expect a ball coming in like kind of like a quarterback throws a seam, a seam route 20 yards downfield. He threw it with that trajectory 45 yards downfield. I, I said the same thing on PFT with Florio the other day. Where I, that's where I said, now it's an out and up Emmanuel Sanders runs. He runs a little out and then up. Sneed's not in a horrible spot, but I think your point is real, and I'll try to pause it right here at the right spot. When he does this right here, He's going, wait, he looks like he's throwing this pretty hard. There's no way I'm going to undercut it. Yeah. He thinks he's going to. But but that's the crazy thing about guys like Josh yes. Allen and Mahomes and Rodgers. Yeah. The ball gets to the highest point, and you think it's going to start to come down here, and it just continues to drive through the target. And, yeah, you're not expecting, wait, is he really going to throw a ball 45 yards, eight feet off the right. ground the whole way there? Right. And that's where it's special. And to me, that's him, Rodgers, Mahomes, yes. Justin Herbert. You know, that's – I really, I think – I don't think I'm missing anybody else. Maybe Matt Stafford. Maybe Stafford. Right. It's those yeah. five who can make that type of throw right there. And I think that's what LeJarius Sneed is doing. Right now, I think yeah. he probably thought, I'm going to get a pick. And now, right now, where we see it and the ball's right here, he's going – he's probably going, oh, I'm in trouble because this ball is higher yeah. and going at a faster pace than, than I anticipated. I think the only coaching point I, I can imagine on Monday, whenever they came back to watch that coach, was probably like, just remember who you're playing against. Uh, well, I, that, that, just just remember I, who the quarterback I, is. I don't know if they were that, – that's where I would – we're going to get to that. I there's let, Let's go to the next play. Okay. Um, because and The next play is Allen ahead. to dig 61 yards. Uh, second quarter, Buffalo was up 14-10. Okay, so this one is not exactly going to explain that, but we're going to get to the next one. That's you're going to go, remember who we're playing against, yeah. okay? Even with this, I want to go, I mean, I, I just, I'm shocked by this. You know, the first thing is, you know, uh, is, okay, you see Stefan Diggs right here in the slot. We got three, it's empty set for all the listeners out there. Sanders and Moss are to the right. You know, Dawson Knox, Stefan Diggs, Gabriel Davis. All right, there we go. Now, my point here and the coverage they're playing, which is like a quarter's coverage, right? It's a quarter's coverage, and it's a little bit like I, you could call it Tampa 4. Uh, it's some sort of quarters, okay? But within this, this is to me where we get to the details a little bit. Like quarter's coverage, first off, Legereus need – he needs to be – this is where the disguising comes back to screw them a little bit. He needs to be head up on Stefan Diggs, if not – or a shade on the outside. And what I would say, when you play quarters coverage, I mean, the safeties are not going to necessarily be always deep. You see Sorensen here is trying to act like there's a blitz, so he's definitely not going to be as deep as you normally are. But quarters is not – like, get really deep coverage anyways for safeties. So there has to be some disruption of the slot receiver, especially when it's Stephon Diggs, who's one of the best receivers in football. So you would like, in the perfect world, anything I ever learned in Tampa from Monty Kiffin, Gus Bradley, Raheem Morris, Mike Tomlin, and a bunch of the other awesome freaking coaches we had, was in quarters, yeah, get your hands on him, and you want to push him inside a little bit because his responsibility is to go to the flat. So give a little, you know, I'm on the outside edge, give a little chuck, 
and then you kind of look to see in your responsibility out in the flat. Well, we're going to see here there's no chuck because, of course, they're trying to disguise. And, I mean, again, let's just look at Stefan Diggs. I mean, he's, he's got nothing to break his stride here. He just gets to go, wait, I can turn it on, and then I'm going to get on the toes of a safety who's not necessarily that fast. And Sorensen's been a good player through his career, but this is not his bread and butter. This is not the position you want to leave him in. And you know who else has it easy? Look at Josh Allen. Well, uh, nobody around him. That was another reason we picked the play. Is exactly right. Like, nobody around him. And within quarters coverage, like, look at this too. Look at Dawson Knox down here. Nobody's even covering Only him. Only one on the screen. Like, yeah. what, what, where, where is the quarters presence there that we just talked about? So... Now, Honey Badger, who's in the middle of the field, okay, he's, he's looking for anything over the middle, okay? This corner, and now people are going to have to take my word for it just a little bit here. Hold on a second. Let me just get this right with my damn clicker. Okay, I want to pause this at the right time. Okay, Honey Badger's looking up for anything in the middle, and I believe this is him right here. Yes, here is the outside corner that we, were, that we haven't really talked about. He was looking for anything coming out, Stefan Diggs running a corner route. And then the leverage in which Sorensen played with, he, in quarters, he, he tried to protect the corner route too much, and he didn't need to. So Diggs made, Diggs made a little bit of a move to the corner and then to the post, and he was screwed. But again, so there's so many details on this play, let alone lack of pressure yeah. and everything you're explaining. And he catches the ball. And look, he thought, you know, this is, I, I, I mean, next time I see him, I'm going to get on Stephon Diggs. Like, he thought he was all by himself. He, didn't, he thought he was going to walk in and score a touchdown here. Right. I don't think he even realized he was right there until the last second. But, again, that just goes back to some of the issues the Kansas City Chiefs are having on that side of the ball. And that's, uh, that's not enough. But, wait, there's more. There is. So, we have the Allen 53-yard touchdown to Dawson Knox. Uh, Buffalo was up at that point, 17-10. And once again, before we see it, the theme of guys running open downfield just continues. It just continues, and this is where it goes back to what you said. Remember who you're playing. Yeah. He's just like the guy you play in practice every day. Yeah. The play's never over, and his arm is limitless. So you can't just go, oh, we got outside the pocket. Let me turn around and just forget what the hell I'm doing. All right, so it's man coverage. It's man coverage across the board. You can see here, right, they got – it's four across. There's the back on the backer. So you have that there. And, you know, hey, a little bit of a pressure, a little pressure here, but it's nothing bad. I mean, it's not like, oh my gosh, they've collapsed the puck. They got a guy going around the edge. All right, whoop de doo. And, of course, this is an easy escape for him. But my point here is more than anything is, is again, you're going to have to take my word a little bit because we don't have film for all these. But here's Sorensen. Okay, Dawson Knox basically was over here like this. He was running with him. He turned back. He saw Josh Allen broke the pocket, and he took a few steps up like he was going to go make the tackle. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say is, first off, and I know this is going to be hard to see because it's a little blurry here. Uh, let's see if I can get it. But, you know, there's guys here. There's two guys underneath. Like, he has no business even, like, worrying about that let alone look at 51 right here do your job don't try to do four other people's jobs and there's just a little of everything like this going on in every game with them and come on that's the easiest right. throw and touchdown josh josh allen's gonna have all year that goes back to your 20 yards completion well ridiculous when you don't cover a guy 40 yards down the field that's what happens let's put the kansas city defense to bed this way before yeah. we go to the offense how fixable are there issues? I, I don't know. I don't. They're, 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 it, I'm, I'm very concerned about the defense. Yeah. I am. It's like hard I said, not to be. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like we said, there's not an area where I can look at right now and go, oh, that's a strength. Or, wait, they're doing this so good. They're close. There's, there's none of that. And, and that's the, where the, I worry the about them. Personnel is kind of the personnel. Yeah, the personnel point. is kind of the personnel at this point. Exactly right. So I don't know where they go. Mm. Uh, and that, that's I'm going to be interested to see what the new approach is or if they make any changes here going forward. I think I think problem number one on the team is the defense being last in scoring defense, giving yes, up the most 100%. points in the league. But then as we go to the offense, yeah. the it, it's a much different situation because they are still one of the best you offenses no in the league. No doubt about it. But, but when you are the best yes. and you slip to one of the best, yeah. it's been a really noticeable drop. Right. 
noticeable drop, plus like compounding it with impatience, stupid mistakes, a little bit like we talk about with the defense mm -hmm. where you just go, hey, you're, you're, you guys aren't good enough, and the offense is going to have to carry the team, and you can't make those mistakes. And, you know, that, that's one of the things, it, certainly. You know, I mean, again, first drive of the game. It's third and ten. He hits Tyree Kill right in the face on the four-yard line. Yeah. Ball bounces off his face. Okay, you, they kick a field goal. That, I mean, you put Mahomes inside the five-yard line. He's going to score a touchdown. So you leave those points. You know, Hill on the shallow cross, hits him in the breadbasket. Ball popped in the air. Pick six. So right there, that's 11 points where I can just go, the offense f***ed over uh, and, and didn't execute. And they have no room for error right now just because of the way the defense is playing. Okay, let, let's, let's kind of focus on what Buffalo did yeah. against Kansas City because the eyeballs will be on the Buffalo scheme. What did they do? Right. What did they do so well? It was incredibly basic. Incredible. Uh, cover two, dropping seven. Yeah. This number here, the Bills defense didn't blitz Mahomes once. No. Not a single time. They also didn't blitz him once in week six in 2020. Like you hear that, that they played cover two, no blitz against against Patrick Mahomes, and they won that way. Yeah. Where does your mind go? Well, I uh, like last year was a different animal. This year I thought, and this is why I picked the Chiefs to win a close game, I thought if they play that way, this old line's been too good so far, they'll protect it, and he'll pick them apart slowly but surely. And then if they do get a little pressure, it won't be that bad to where he'll buy time and still pick them apart. That's where I, I just – I had to see it to believe it with Buffalo's defense, and I believe it now because they played, like you said, it's quarters. It's, it's two deep shells the whole game, quarters across the board. You know, Tampa two, two-man. Their changeup of the game was robber, right, where the two safeties, like, one goes deep, one mm. looks for a guy in the middle of the field. Yeah. That's what happened on the interception pick six. That's what happened when the Chiefs went for it on a fourth down. I mean, basic stuff, basic stuff. So within that, the other reason I picked the Chiefs to win the game, I thought, well, this whole line's different this year. They've been blowing people off the ball in every game. If, if Andy stays patient, they should be able to do the same thing in this one. Well, that wasn't the case either. You know, not that it was bad, and maybe you could sit here and, like, you know, and Pete said yesterday, he goes, well, do you think they could have stayed more patient? I'm like, yeah, maybe they could have stayed more patient. But I don't think they liked the way it looked early on, and that's why they got, got off of it right away. Personnel-wise, uh, back to this, this uh, personnel, we talked about the Kansas City personnel defensively. Yeah. Buffalo's personnel, I mean, do they have something that's so good that other teams won't be able to replicate this? No, not necessarily. Um, well, yeah, I mean, yes, they because do. Because you do. know teams will try. The safeties are all – everybody's doing this to the Chiefs. This is, this is a weekly thing. I mean, nobody – you know, everybody's going to take this approach, again, until they show consistency that they yeah. can just continue to dice you apart and be that way. But they haven't done that. So, again, they took the approach of, we don't think you'll be patient enough. You'll make a mistake and screw up at some point. And – I don't really think your run game's all that quite yet, so we're not going to buy into, like, we have to put people there to stop that. 63 pass plays, 16 run plays. Yeah, it's a little bad. It's a, I, I understand that. It does. But I think early on, and again, you know, yeah, you're going to see five, five carries for 27 yards, 5.4 yards. But Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, that, I mean, we're going to show you a four-yard run here in a minute. I'm going to show you a four-yard run. And he's got 13 on the night. So that means he had six carries for nine yards the rest of the night. Their leading rusher was Mahomes. Yeah, of course. I mean, yes. And I think that was a surprise to me. So, like, let's, let's get to that play. Uh, I think we have a, uh, an early run play, right? Yes. Uh, Edwards Alaire for four yards, just, just like you mentioned. Edwards Alaire for four yards. But I think it was this that it's, it's the first play of first the game. First play of the game, yeah. Right? First play of the game. Hey, shocker, look what we got. Uh, it's too deep, right? I mean, it's, they're, they're going to play too deep. They don't care. Now, where Buffalo is different is they have nine people that can play on their defensive line. They're always fresh. They cycle them in and out. Ed Oliver is a different player this year. Rousseau has changed their team because he's just such a big physical presence. I mean, you want to talk about self-scout thyself. I was wrong about him coming out in the draft. He's a beast, all right? Star Loto Lele being back from COVID-19 and didn't play last year. Ass kicker, all right? And, like, again, my point here is, because I'm not going to show you every run or do that, but I just want you to watch. I mean, right guard and right tackle. Niang and, and the, uh, the rookie from um, Tennessee. Um, is it Smith, I believe, right? Um, yeah, Trey Smith, right? So the, the point here is just watch them. I mean, watch Watch, watch what they do. 
I mean, Rousseau throws the right tackle on the ground. Mm, geez. Okay? Lotu Lele throws the center and the guard off track. I mean, so the center can't open up the hole and get over there. But really, okay, so let me explain how this play is supposed to work. This is a weak side bubble. They have been killing everybody with this play. You want to play this and play this coverage, we're going to blow you off the ball and run right between this defensive end and the defensive tackle. Well, Lotu Lele, he doesn't allow Creed Humphrey to make the reach block because Trey Smith can't get enough of them to knock them to let Creed Humphrey get the edge of them to where he can't stop right there. Okay, so that was my point. And I think this is why there was a little impatience in the run because, yeah, it's a four-yard run, but your two guys on the right, two out of your three guys on the right side got their ass kicked. So they were probably like, whoa, we don't like the look of that, right? I mean, you know, again, so I think that was a little bit of why there was impatience. Does Andy Reid, could he have stayed a little bit more patient? Sure. But the bottom line is they didn't move the front four when they wanted to run the ball for the most part either. And that's where Buffalo's become special. And they limited Tyreek Hill. And we've seen this a little bit throughout the season. Yeah. He's had some giant games right. a lot or a little yeah. is kind of what he's producing. He was seven catches, 63 yards. Chargers held him to five catches, 56 yards. Yeah. These teams that are having success right. against Tyreek Hill, right. what are they doing? It's just – they, they understand the offense and how he's used. So they're always looking him up or have people dropping in the right, the right areas. I think that's the biggest thing I would say more than anything. The Bills have two phenomenal safeties who, you know, really understand and they're extremely well coached from Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott, just like the Chargers are with Brandon Staley, to where they have, when it gets to Sunday, they have a great understanding of how they're going to be attacked certain formations if you see this receiver do this the other two are going to do that and that's to me you know the coaching but it wasn't like great man-to-man -man coverage or anything like that no right. it was a combination of like we know where you're going to attack we know where your guys want to run on these certain formations and then we're going to get pretty good pressure to where Mahomes isn't just going to be able to sit there all day and make magic happen and pick us apart that way and the combination that I always thought these last couple of years or so many times we've sat here the Hill Kelsey combination just kills people yeah that they at the end of the game they have video game type type numbers right. together right they're not doing that right now, no, now they, not. they had 13 catches on Sunday night, but they average, I think, less than 10 yards per reception. So, I mean, by playing zone, by, yeah. as you said, knowing where they want to go, I mean, that's that formula really works someday. It, it is. That's where the Chiefs have to expand the offense a little bit. They have to come up with some more plays to attack some of these shells defenses like we've talked about. The other thing I would say, too, is, like, you're getting quarters coverage, and that means you're basically a lot of the times getting outside one-on-ones. You know, that's where I think they signed Josh Gordon because they want to go, wait, if you're going to use all your guys in the secondary and push them over to our three-receiver side on the right and and always be there for our deep crossers and double crossers and double posts and all of that, and you're going to push everybody that way, now I'm, I'm hoping with Josh Gordon they're going to go, wait, we got a guy over here that can win yeah. just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. We're going to throw it outside, and we can do that. So you can't always, like, push your coverage to the formation side, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, yes, uh, you know, that's where they don't have. And McCole Hardman, he's not that kind of guy to work on the outside and catch back shoulders and, you know, fade balls or anything of that nature. So uh, I think that's why they signed Josh Gordon, and hopefully they can kind of find that element within their offense. Week six, do you think they get well at the Washington football team? Um, I think it'll be a really close football game. I, I, wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, Washington's defense hasn't been very good. So I would think they're going to have their way a little bit more with Washington than they did with the Chargers or Buffalo. But, uh, again, I'm not panicked about Kansas City's offense. There's just no room for error. There's no room for error with the de defense, with the way it's playing, and that's what they got to really fix. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.